I wanted to see how much science you can get from one world and to do this we will be progressively adding different mechanics and techniques to build up the theoretical best possible science producing world. In doing this I will show you as many science mechanics as possible and how much they matter so you can use them in your game. I'll also be digging through the wiki once I run out of my own ideas so I will also learn something from this video. Put in the comments how much science you think one world can produce. I think you'll be surprised. This was filmed and researched on 3.4 however this video is still applies to 3.5 and we'll also talk about toxoids more specifically overtuned at the end of the video. The first up we're just going to fill this planet with as many research labs as possible to get a good baseline of how much a planet can produce without optimizations. Here we have our capital full of base research lab and we're producing 318 science. This is without any buffs from our empire, we have no civics and our species have no traits. So this is really the baseline, we also have no governor, no assisting research which we will get on to. The only buff we're getting is from the Empire Capital, which gives us 10% resource from all jobs. A bit more stability and amenities, which we will also get on to later. And as you can see, we will be using cheats to test this, but we won't be using any cheats to get things that you wouldn't be able to get in the game. This is purely so I can test this quickly without having to play multiple games as I'm slowly building this up. Now we're going to use researchable technologies, which doesn't include repeatables, so that we can up these labs. <laughs> so we've run out of populations. It's fine because we can add pops to this planet and get it filled out. We'll also just fill every job up. We've now gone from 318 to 1104 science from this planet just by upgrading all our lab once and increasing the stability a bit. And if we upgrade everything else to the max and fill out the pops, we're now producing 1608 with fully upgraded research complexes. So that's already impressive, but we can increase this much, much more. So I did give all technologies, which means we're getting 65% from our empire, which is the techs that give you more tech for each tech, a lot of tech. So that's why there's a big jump from base labs to the second one, as I had to give myself more technologies from those two gaps. The deficits are quite high with 214 consuming goods of 22 exotic gases. What if we move this to a tech world instead of a capital? I made a mistake and accidentally gave myself 300 pops. Oops. Okay, so now we have that tech world. It is producing 1,515 with it fully maxed out and luxury goods distributed. Whereas our capital is producing 1,656, which is actually only 141 more. The real kicker will come when we upgrade our designation, which gives more resources from jobs. But as you can see, the consumer good upkeep is 213 here and 195 on our tech world, which is 18 less consumer goods. These add up over the time, but we're going the most technology possible so for now we will stay on our capital and we will move on to habitats and ring worlds soon don't you worry because those are worlds as well the first thing we're going to do is recruit a governor because i know that's bugging some of you now the obvious choice is the intellectual governor it gives 10 percent more research from jobs but that's not all a governor does governors also increase resources from jobs reduce crime and empire size from pops to every skill level and we can get up to eight skill levels at default the caps can be increased through civics or traits but for now we're just going to stay at base level now we've increased that at one level we've gone from 1656 to 1749 science just from a level one intellectual leader now he's max level eight he's getting 16 percent more resources from jobs which means we're now at 1860 just in in the game we can actually add eye for talent to our ruler which gives one more leader cap which means we're now at level nine and now at 1878 science on a one world and we've only just begun the next thing we can do is assisting research this starts off at 10 percent for each science but increases by two percent for each level so if we work on a level nine we will be getting 26% more. Let's go assist. As you can see, we are assisting research. We are now at 2,088 tech on this planet. Now, there are no other traits that actually increase this. If you weren't cheating, you usually want someone with either leader lifespan so they can get to a high level or more experience gain because they do gain experience while assisting a research. We'll now move on to the discovery tree. Now, I'd like to preference we're not interested in research speed. Usually you would care about research speed, but I'm purely going 
for how much tech we can get from one planet. But discovery is still good because we can get research subsidies, which is an edict that will increase our research output by another 10% and increase the energy credits by one. But this is still for science. The discovery tree also increases our leader cap by one, which means we'll be getting a bit more assisted research and a bit more from our governor. With all that added up, we are now getting 2,199, which is just over 100 more than assisting research. We are really starting to get up there. Now we actually need to get into our empire build and actually do something with this. So previously we weren't getting any buffs to this from our empire. But now we can obviously go intelligent, which gives us another 10% all jobs. And then we can go natural engineers, physicists, or sociologists. We can't pick all of them, but we can pick one of them, which will increase our tech. I'm just going to go for engineers. At the minute, I don't think it matters. But further down the line, we might discover something where it would matter. Remember, these percentages do add up. I'm not sure how, but if there's something like more physics research going on later down the line, we might want to switch. Now, the rest of the traits is quite interesting. Unruly is pretty much a free pick. We don't care about our empire size as it only slows down research speed not our tech output i'm torn between talented and charismatic charismatic will increase our amenities from jobs increasing stability which therefore increases how much we produce on our planet or talented which gives us another plus one to leader level cap which you saw does help a bit i'm going to go for charismatic and then quarrelsome i believe the more amenities will actually add up more especially if we have a lot of clerks working than that one level in leader cap for our origin this is actually quite hard you either go for guy world which gives us 10 percent more resources from jobs and 10 percent more happiness or we could go a relic world which then allows us to restore an eco monopolis which then gives us 20 percent of resources from jobs and a few other buffs but it doesn't matter in this experiment we do have shattered ring and void dwellers which we're going to experiment with in a bit or even clone army we can actually get 40 percent more resources from ruler jobs and 25 percent more from specialist jobs but we will be limited to a certain amount of clones and who knows if that will be enough or we could go teachers of the shroud which actually gives us latent psionic five percent to each science but i think actually restoring the eco monopolis might be better for now when it comes to government ethics we actually only want materialists because natic only changes how much we pay on robot upkeep and our research speed which we don't really care about the main one here which we're going to be fanatic is fanatic egalitarian remember researchers are specialists which means they're going to get that 10 percent instead of five to output nothing else here really helps us but maybe that stability from pacifists might be useful the only issue with this is we have to go democratic but for this none of the other other authorities actually matter. Civic wise, we're going to go technocracy for those capital buildings for a few more science jobs. And then we're also going to go meritocracy, which gives us 10% more specialist job output, which affects our scientists and an extra level to leader cap, which we saw earlier is actually quite helpful. For raw science output, I don't think there's any better civics. Obviously, this is not ideal for a proper game because you do have to have the consequences of the upkeep of the science. We can also come over to game settings. Now, there's actually not many that make a difference here as tech tradition cost actually affects the cost of the techs not how much you output however there is one difficulty we can change to get a bit more science and that's going to cadet cadet is the only setting that gives player bonuses rather than the ai bonuses we'll actually get 50 percent more resources from jobs and stations i know many of you won't play at this difficulty so for now we'll leave it off but in the future we might turn cadet on just to see how much we can get i'm going to set everything up like we had before but now we're with all our empire bonuses. We've now got everything set up and we're now at 2,915 science from one planet. And what I forgot to build is actually a research institute, which gives us 15% more output, a science director job, which produces science too. So let's build that. And does it actually give us more science? <laughs> and it turns out the research institute is actually giving us less science. We're getting 2,840, which is actually crazy. Could that be because we have jobs? Let's just kill a few pops. Murder them. Remember, we do have a better stability because we have an Ecomonopolis. And the Ecomonopolis is giving us 20% to our job output. And nope, it's 
giving us 2,840, which is less than if we just had a maxed out research lab. So when you're going for max, you're actually better off just having all those jobs. Obviously, it's more job efficient. Let me just murder. It's more job efficient to have that institute. When you're just going for raw research, we're getting way more. Now, because we're materialists, we can actually increase our living standard from decent conditions to academic privilege, which again gives us 10% more research. They love their 10%. It's now putting us at 3,029 research from this planet, which is honestly just crazy. How much far can we go? Can we get to 10,000? That is a long shot. Now, as you heard me mention before, we can actually increase our specialist output and we'll increase our science output. So Prosperity has a nice plus 5% specialist job output. We're going to go down the specialist tree. And once we finish it, it also gives us 5% more resources from jobs and stability. So we will be getting about 10% more. Of course, it's 10%. Domination allows us to increase our governor leader cap by two, which is just more output for us. And our ruler level cap, which we'll just grab. Our ruler level doesn't actually do anything. It just gives us more edict funds. But our governor can now be level 10. Let's just check the rest of the traditions before checking the science again. Harmony's actually not too bad. We can get an extra leader cap. Our ethics attraction is increased and so is our stability, which just helps our planet out. And last but not least, subterfuge does not help us at all. <laughs> These are the four traditions that actually help us. And we're now at 3,176. It's actually not increased us by that much, about 150 science from those traditions. Tradition-wise, there's not too many. Tech ascendancy only increases research speed. That's not helpful for us. One vision actually could help. Probability usage and government of ethics attraction will help our planet. So we'll grab that. Transcendent learning, more leader cap, which we're going for. In a real game, you probably will never reach these levels on your leaders, so there's not much point, but this is the theoretical highest. And the rest doesn't really help us yet, big yet, because we've got some traits that we can get potentially that will help us a bunch. Okay, let's level up our leaders. Wait, is 10 the max? 10 is the max. Okay, so it seems like 10 to the max, which I didn't know because I never really go for high skill levels. That means Charismatic was the right species choice because we can get max leader cap within the game. And One Vision didn't actually help. We still have the same science. Our stability is pretty much capped out without cheating loads more in. And now we can ascend our planet. So this will increase our designation effect by 25%, which is really the only thing we care about. So we're currently at 10% from resources. We go up to tier one. One, we're at 12.5. Let's go all the way to 10. And here we are at 10. We have 35% resources from jobs. And the stability gain actually helps us quite a lot because now we're at 100% stability. This gets us up to 3,443 science from one planet, which is pretty formidable. And just to double check with the research institute, we're at 3,330. So it's actually less than if we just had max scientists still. Now there are a few more things you can do. Now if you went down the biological ascension path, you can actually remove your intelligent trait. You can actually pick up erudite which gives you 20% researcher output and an extra level leader cap, but 10 to the max, instead of the 10% from intellectual. You can also pick up Robust, which gives you 5% more resources from jobs, and that'll increase our science income a bit more. Just remember to apply your template, which gets us up to 3,608 research, as it also gives us the governor trait, which gives us 5% from each job. Before moving on to my wiki research to increase this tech, let's compare this to the ring worlds and habitats just in case they can get above 3,608 from our eco-monopolist. So with the Void Dweller start, we actually get more output on habitats, which is going to be potentially huge. We're going to keep everything else exactly the same. And I'd also like to mention the orbital rings don't matter in this scenario, as there's no orbital ring building for science. So if we're on a habitat ring or eco-monopolist, it does not matter. So I've built up these habitats the same way we built up the planets. And I've got a capital and a research station as max out as I can. The capital is producing 2,812, which is far less than at Ecomonopolis. And our research station is producing even less at 2,352. Now, what I haven't tried is actually using a research institute. So maybe that'll be better. The hard bit about this is actually balancing housing with jobs, but the stability doesn't actually tank too much. We can get rid of the two unemployed. Actually, what if we just went 
fall into research. Okay, without caring about Heising, we've got 3,158 with the Institute. And then without Institute, we have 3,194, which is slightly more. But it does not get anywhere near at Ecomonopolis, which was at 3,608. And if we stop caring about housing on this planet, we're going to get less. I just can tell from these numbers. We get 2,826. And if we really don't care about amenities, 1% stability is actually less. So we do need some amenities. Currently, the Ecomonopolis is winning. Thing with the habitats, you can get this out much earlier than Ecomonopolis. So in the game, these habitats are actually quite good. But when we're just going for max without a care in the world, Econ Monopolis is winning. Something I haven't done is actually reforming the government, which I have to wait in game for 20 years to do. The only thing I think that it would be useful for is giving it an extra building slot, but that's not going to increase our science by 400 to be the Ecomonopolis. For the Ecomonopolis, though, we could get Shadow Council, which gives us more ruler resource output, and we do have a few ruler tech jobs. So we might be able to go back and actually get even more. The rest of the civics, there aren't any others that will actually help us. And now we move from habitats to the ring world so we have our ring world that has filled out with researchers as best as possible the amenities and stability isn't perfect but from my test this is the best we can get and we are getting 7265 on this ring and on our capital world with a research institute which increases the tech by 15 percent from our researchers we're actually getting more at 7412 this is because we get most of our science jobs from the district so losing a max out tech lab or the institute actually makes up all this tech so now we have completely smashed the ecomonopolis and habitat but is a ring research designation better than this can we really get to that 10,000? and this is before delving into the wiki to find some more buffs that we can add on so as we saw the institute's better for the rings however on the research ring will designation maxed out this buff doesn't actually make up for the lack of stability and just how much this planet burns to a crisp we are only getting 6597 which is just under 1000 difference from having our capital be our research world this is due to probably the stability and the amenities i've tried many different ways by helping the amenity stability and this is the max that we can get just by purely shoving research using the clone vats which you have to have or otherwise the pops will decline and i feel like that's a bit cheesy by going above them as that wouldn't be able to happen in a real game we would only be able to get a hundred pops and as you can see we have 159 so we wouldn't actually be able to fill out this ring and i don't think the clone buffs will get us to this level on the Ecomonopolis. If I'm wrong though, let me know in the comments. And you also have to keep in mind, five of these labs would have to be replaced with clone vats, which yes, it will get rid of some jobs, six times five, which is 30. We'd still be above the 100 pops and this would decrease the tech even more. But it really wouldn't get us that level. They are efficient, but we don't care about efficiency. We just want raw tech. So now we delve into the wiki. The first thing we need to look at is different planetary modifiers such as research assistants or the only one I could actually find that would work on a ring that increases tech is alien studies which isn't a permanent buff but we're going for the theoretical maximum to see if the enigmatic cash comes over your ring which you're pushing for science you'll get 30% to all job which brings us up to 7923 technology we're getting closer to the fable 10,000 so there are other modifiers that can happen on planets such as we have Wenkwerk Prime here which has Wenkwerk Gardens which gives 10% to research output and you can also get other modifiers such as Titanic Life. Now this is all naturally spawning. I didn't use console commands for this and as you can see we can get double science bonuses. The only issue is this is a Gaia world which does give us resources from jobs but not as much as an Ecomonopolis and you cannot terraform this into an Ecomonopolis. And there are features that spawn with these that can say give technology like titanic life forms but none of these can spawn on a ring the ring has doubled from ecomonopolis we're not going to get doubled production from these in the long term small bonuses there's other things like sea of consciousness which gives 10 percent researcher jobs but this can't stack with wank work we have event modifiers such as subterranean magnetic miracle filtered atmospheric hallucinogens, team nanite swarms but these are all from specific events and won't stack on top of each other 
the same as anomalies which is really rare and won't be on a ring and the same as archaeological site modifiers which is only on specific planets and the same as these planetary features we won't get them on the ring the only modifier we can actually get naturally without cheating and making it completely impossible is alien studies now what i did do was change the trait slightly i removed charismatic because on the ring we weren't actually working many clerk jobs because we didn't have enough room with the housing but now that we have all of our species on communal we actually found more housing slots which meant we could actually work all the jobs that were produced here which meant we could get a few more amenities which raise stability we've broken into the 8000 at 8057 which beats the previous by about 130 tech output so just cramming a few more pots did help us here and remembering to have luxury goods distributed on now the final thing i can think of is reforming that government and then turning the difficulty down and i think shadow council will be the best just for that 10 percent from ruler pop output since we do have three rulers and the little bit's gonna help none of the other civics actually increase any more output or technology so we'll skip to 20 years in the future so i can actually change that we can finally do it shadow council i don't think it's gonna make a huge deal but Small margins, small margins. 8,096, we went up by about 40. Now something I completely forgot about and I was reminded while simulating 20 years, the Galactic Council. These actually do give buffs that can help us. So the first obvious one would be Unchained Knowledge. Now the first few do not actually help us, but once we get to Ethical Guideline Refactoring, we get Researcher Output by 10%. And then Extra Dimensional Experimentation gives us a decision, consumes row for more research, which I think does give more tech. Now, we're going to have to go through and pass all these. I need to find the cheats to actually be able to do that because I'm not waiting that long. Okay, so we've finished this galactic resolutions. We get the extra dimensional experimentation, which gives us a dimensional portal researcher, which gives us 10 more jobs, which is perfect. We're going to fill up this planet. So we've just one resolution fully passed. We're now at 8,780 but this job only produces physics research and our species are giving buffs to engineering research. So if we turn our buff to physics research, we might actually get a bit more out of this. And we are getting 8,004, which is about 20 more. It's not huge, but every little helps. Okay, I'm not going to do the calculation for all of the rest of the resolutions that can't, but I'll tell you which ones we're doing as I've gone through and actually made note of which ones will affect us. So. Divinity of Life will eventually give us Biological Pop Happiness by 10%, which will just help with stability. Galactic Commerce will increase our resources from jobs eventually, right at the bottom, but we are going to get less happiness, but I think we can counteract that with future resolutions. The Greater Good will eventually increase our stability and lower pop housing usage right at the bottom so that's going to help us a tiny bit and the only issue is that they want utopian abundance but that will remove our academic privilege which has already been removed once but i don't think in breach will actually do anything to us so we're going to say no and keep on academic privilege because no sanctions have been passed it does not matter and last but not least ecological protection is going to eventually increase our happiness and lower pop amenity usage which means we can hopefully get more amenities increasing the stability which can help we are now at 9060 1000 away from 10,000, and those buffs did help only by about 200 but it helped now in the game this is very rare that you're going to get all of these max so i don't think i've ever actually played a game that's gotten two maxed out ones because of how slow the galactic community is but it's possible that this happens now what if we actually now that we've got more building slots remove the institute for another lab will this actually get us higher i doubt it but we should probably just try and we get 9011 which is only 50 less so that institute is weird how it actually doesn't do too much for raw output it does save on jobs i had to get about 10 more pops now the only thing left to do 
is actually do all this on the lower difficulty, which is going to take me a while. But it's worth it to try and break the 10,000 mark. So here we go, Cadet. The only difficulty that gives player bonuses, resources from jobs, and it gives you more stability. What about this edict that actually gives more happiness? So we're also adding that. Okay, I've done it. <laughs> I've gone through and added all the buffs again. That took me way longer than I thought. And also... From pure chance, we got comment cited, which is another buff that you can get if you're extremely lucky, which gives plus 5% happiness. We're 92% stability due to cadet, and we're getting 50% more resources for my jobs. But is it enough to get the 10? thousand let's see so we'll start with the right hand numbers so it doesn't give it away straight away we have one one four nine we couldn't get ten thousand hold up editing ep for you here while editing i thought of two new things to apply that may be able to get us above ten thousand so the first thing is i forgot the scalarian vassal ow okay we'll quickly make a habitat and a colony ship to make our own vassal okay so create sector create vassal and turn them into a scalarium now the contribution from their research won't count towards this there is one special thing that will help us and there is at level one we get scalarium tutelage which means if we have a relay network our researchers get a 10% output. All the others don't actually help. The leaders that the Sclarium produced don't help. It's purely just this hyper relay that will buff us up. So we'll whack that. Now we should be getting the buff. Relay links forged. And that has got us so close to 10,000. We're at 9,683. And now for the last thing I can actually think of is these modifiers. I completely forgot about them. And the first obvious one is Void Loops, which is an event you can get from the Void Clouds. And that gives us 10% from physics researcher jobs, which is great because that stacks with how we have dimensional portal researchers with the natural physicist traits we also have a life worthwhile which is from the never forget archaeological site outcome which we are getting into some rarer things but it is physically possible that we get this and happiness increases our stability which increases the tech now, there are two others that i can't seem to find id to cheat them in that is cheap frills which gives you five percent happiness which is from a dig site and secrets of the voltum which gives plus 10 percent amenities which is a precursor now these are possible to all stack but i can't find them uh, and that would give us more amenities and more happiness which would slightly help there are a few others like technology of the divine which gives five percent happiness but that is only for spiritualist empires if you find the infinity machine and declare it a divine object but obviously we couldn't pick spiritualist because we went egalitarian and materialist there's also covenant instrument of desire which gives plus 10 percent resources from jobs but we had to go bioascension for the better perks and this is from the shroud which is from the psionics ascension now this is everything i can think of let's see what the final number is <laughs> so here we go starting from the last number we have two nine seven nine we didn't reach it we were 208 of 10,000 i sent at the beginning of the video which i genuinely didn't think we'd get this close to and now we go on to the 3.5 stuff toxoids got announced while making this video so i decided to wait and just apply the toxoids or 3.5 content on to the end of this video so i've already already gone through and added everything and we'll start with the first thing the new difficulty civilian we now get plus a hundred percent resources from jobs and stations and plus 20 percent stability on top of this relics got changed but the only one that actually matters is the ether drake trophy which when activated gives 10 percent happiness and 10 stability which doesn't really make much of a difference the brood queen only gives research speed so it doesn't actually matter the next of course is overtuned. We get access to a bunch of different techs. So what we had to do was start with this origin and then build a ring world ourselves. But in doing this, we've combined all of the tech traits with Erudite giving us 20%, Elevated Synapses giving us 20%, Natural Physicist giving us 15%, Communal, and then Augmented Intelligence giving us another 10%. So we're getting 50% to all, except for Physics, where we get 65%. Now, with all these new stuff combined, plus all the stuff we've talked about, we can finally do, I hope, the final number, unless I think of anything else. I'll start from the rightmost. We have five zero six two one twelve thousand six hundred and five total science from one planet we beat 10k and all it took was a whole entire update now there's one more thing i want to touch on and that's montu's most recent video from last week here you can get essentially 
an absurd amount of science, but it is using a bug. Essentially, this technique uses culture workers and the fact they reduce the amenity usage and the housing usage. As you can see from this screenshot, we have a bunch of culture workers and then 2,066 pops. This is because utopian abundance gives tech every unemployed pop. So he just has lots of unemployed pops. Now, even so, this screenshot doesn't actually beat our ring, but I'm sure with some optimations, and of course, if you're playing at civilian, you would probably beat it, but this does use a bug, so we're not going to count it. This essentially was a stop you all comment and saying, Mod 2's video. Anyway, back to previous me. If you have any suggestions for me, let me know in the comments, and then I'll update a pinned comment where I'll add those benefits to the save and update the number. Make sure to look at the pinned comment before you comment, because if you're all saying one thing that I've obviously missed, I would have added that. If you enjoyed this, this video then you'll enjoy a video where I theorized the hardest game of Solaris possible. It is physically impossible. I don't think anyone can beat it. Go check it out.